Yo, what's going on, friends, family? My name's Skylands. I was actually just playing guitar, uh, chilling out, and, you know, scrolling through Reddit. You know, just completely chillax day. Uh, you know, and um, I just stumbled upon some news that we actually got three new, I think, technically MMOs uh, upcoming here. Uh, it's actually from Pearl Abyss. This is going to be the developer of Black Desert Online, which is a game that I frequently actually do play and I've covered on the channel. And whenever I've done a video, um, they have been paid promotions and they've been so fun. I, I get to do some of the weirdest, coolest stuff because they do pay me. Uh, so I'm able to kind of take a little bit of extra time with those videos and come up with some weird ideas, especially because I'm very much against the general core gameplay loop of Black Desert, which I do consider pay to win and I do consider uh, egregious uh, with its gambling mechanics. But being a sandbox game, you can play it how you want. I love covering the game in a multitude of different ways that don't include those mechanics. Um, so, you know, this this company, uh, you know, the game that they've made, Black Desert, um, polarizing, that's for sure, absolutely, but it's gorgeous and, you know, in, in a lot of ways, whether you love or hate the game, I think objectively, if you were to rank it, uh, depending on certain mechanics, like in terms of like the character creator, in terms of like the combat, um, in terms of the expanse of the world, things, you know, there's just certain things that Black Desert just like, just does amazing. You, you'd probably have to put it at the top of a list for a number of different reasons. So love it or hate it, guys, uh, this company, they kind of know some stuff. They, they kind of know a little bit about making an MMO. Just a little bit. Uh, it's one of the most popular games despite it being such a niche genre. Yeah, exciting stuff. So with that, we actually have three new games. Um, one actually sounds a lot like Black Desert. Uh, it seems to be kind of a little bit of a spin. So let's talk about that one first. This one is called Crimson Desert, not to be confused with the private server of Black Desert Online. So Crimson Desert, uh, named so maybe possibly to be kind of like a sister title to Black Desert. Um, I think it's actually named Crimson Desert to straight up just attack that private server, but maybe not. It is supposed to be an open world MMORPG set in an epic fantasy world. So I don't know if it's set in like the Black Desert universe. It would be cool if there was like some sort of multiverse or something, or if it's set on the same planet um, or something, but Crimson Desert is gonna be a little bit different um, because it's, it's a war for survival between three tribes that fight for control over the Pi Well continent is what it says there. So that's cool. Um, you know, I actually really do like the uh, three faction system, which we get a little bit inside of Elder Scrolls Online, a little bit inside of Guild Wars 2. That's very uh, fractioned off the faction warfare, but it's the main it's the main gameplay loop of Planetside 2. It is the main gameplay loop of Camelot Unchained and a few other games uh, upcoming, we might see that as well. And so I'm kind of excited for that. Uh, they say tribes. So I, um, you know, I'm a little worried with the, some of the wording. Uh, of course, I'm going to cover each of these games individually as they're announced and as I get to play them. But, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for these living world style games, as long as it is a living, breathing world. But three tribes, player PvP focused game uh, fighting over a continent. That sounds pretty focused. I like that. Black Desert, uh, one of the things that Maybe it's a it's a boon, but it's also a detriment. Double edged sword is that there's kind of a lot to do. And at the same time, the game obviously has like a focus on what it wants you to do. So it'd be cool if this game just right out of the gate. It's a PvP game. You know, they, they took the combat systems that they've learned from Black Desert, refined it a little bit, uh, tuned it. And then, um, you know, that's the game Because Black Desert. A lot of people find the PvP to be mostly an annoyance. So it'd be cool to have a game that's hyper focused on it and does it good. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll, uh, you know, take the place of something like Darkfall or Mortal Online, because honestly, those games have no presence whatsoever. So a true full PvP MMO from these guys probably is going to be pretty good. Next up, we have a game called Plan 8. Like, I don't know if that's supposed to be almost punny, uh, like Planet. I think it's going to be sci-fi. Uh, Pearl Abyss is calling this one an exosuit MMO shooter. So that's going to be, oh, Actually, the eight might even be attacking the game Ember or EM8ER, uh, which is actually from the previous head of, uh, I believe, Firefall development. Um, so, no, I, I mean, I, I think he was the head game designer, but I'm not sure the position he was. Anyways, one of the one of the peoples who was doing Firefall, which is a game that I actually loved despite all of its um, faults. And, uh, you know, in the alpha, it was actually really, really exciting of a game. But Firefall could have been so great. It really shouldn't have even been shut down, to be honest, um, you know, as bad as it did get. It was still a very unique game. Um, it was a true MMO looter shooter. You know, you, people call Destiny or Warframe that. No, 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 no. Firefall actually was an MMO 
and it actually was pretty cool. Anyways, plan eight seems to be like that. Uh, you're gonna have an exosuit, so it's probably gonna be um, kind of similar to BDO, where you choose a character or probably an exosuit and then from there customize it. It'd be kind of cool if it was a bit different, maybe, um, with a ton of customization. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm always on the fence about stuff like that because I actually really liked Firefall. Just, you know, you pick a character. It was almost like a, you know, it was almost like a hero shooter in a way. And it, it, it'd be cool if Plan 8 was almost um, kind of like the vision that they had for Project Titan or what Overwatch was going to be as an MMO. So I think this could be cool. Um, we're seeing kind of a more of a surge of a sci-fi MMOs. We haven't had a lot, uh, you know, in a while that have been good. Um, you know, around the EverQuest days and uh, World of Warcraft days, we had some and they had completely thrown out for WoW clones. So kind of cool that we're getting one there. What do you guys think? Uh, what kind of gameplay do you want from an exosuit? MMO shooter. Ba basically, I just want something that fills that Firefall itch that I have deep in my heart. And lastly, we've got this new one that was announced. I'm um, kind of excited here. I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's like Doki V. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, um, so this is supposed to be a collectible, a, coll a collectible, okay? Like focused on collectibles, whatever that means. MMORPG for all ages. Um, we got a bunch of uh, former uh, BDO devs working on it, which is pretty exciting as well. Um, and I think I think that this could be cool. I mean, there's like a lot of games that are kind of like this. We, we get a lot of uh, WoW clones that are really focused on the collectibles, but those are really more just kind of achievement-y. Um, they're really purely cosmetic. It'd be really fun if this whole game is focused on collectibles. It'd be more kind of like Pokemon where the collectibles give you unique effects. You know, um, I don't know if it's going to be collectible items or collectible creatures or hopefully it's just like a whole bunch of different random items, spells, monsters, mounts, and they all do radically different things. I think that'd be so cool. Collect different musical instruments to play songs in town. Um, obviously collect different outfits. Sure. Collect different pets. Sure. Um, but it'd be kind of cool if it's like different mounts, um, you know, like in Guild Wars 2, uh, different mounts can uh, allow you to do different things. Maybe you have like a punch gun, you know, and you can like run around or, or throw snowballs at people, you know, just just really silly things. I think a really silly, fun, collectible game. But that, that was also included as part of the gameplay, you know, maybe it could be like Toontown, right? You, you go around collecting snowballs. Well, you now have a new ability called Snowball. So you run around and you throw snowballs and that's how you attack things. I don't know. Could be neat. Could be fun. I'm always I'm always a sucker, actually, uh, despite the fact that my favorite genre is hardcore PvP sandbox MMO. Um, I'm actually I, I'm always enamored with, um, you know, games like uh, Guild Wars 2 with, with the seasonal events or Toontown specifically. Um, I played The Amazing World. I think a lot of you guys grew up with like Club Penguin, things like that. Those kind of games actually, especially since I became a father and I started playing a lot of these different games for a wide variety of, of different kind of audiences. It's actually really cool to find like the depth or the fun or especially the meta community aspects of a lot of those sillier games, because a lot of them the, the mechanics aren't always super hardcore, but the, the, the essence of an MMO is the community and that social engagement. And that is absolutely beyond a doubt. It exists. It not only exists, but it thrives in those kind of games. So I don't think you guys should overlook this one either. All right, but that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. Um, this is a developer that I, I have uh, basically followed. Um, you know, I played a lot of Black Desert Online and I actually um, you know, I'm a little worried for a, I don't want it to be pay to win. Um, you know, I don't want to have gambling mechanics in these games, things like that. Please don't. Um, hopefully we can make a lot of noise about that. But then again, they make a lot of money with Black Desert Online. It's a very popular game, um, but still, you know, I think we should make that noise. And at the same time, still, we should give these games a shot. We should give them attention. And, um, you know, I, I think in terms of like a technical prowess with BDO um, and what they've achieved with that game, despite love it or hate it, you have to admit that um, they've they've done some stuff and uh, these guys know how to they, they know the, the fundamentals of how to make a game. They know how to make an MMO, which seems a little bit rare nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, they can make a functioning game. Pretty sweet. So here's three games that, um, you know, we'll peel some eyeballs on. I got some future videos probably coming up on these games. If you guys want to see that, like, um, subscribe, you know, promote the video, uh, talk about it on, in the Discord links in the description as well. That'd be pretty cool. And um, yeah, I'll cover these games. Um, there, there's actually going to be a stream here. These were kind of announced ahead of time, but um, they're actually going to have this big developer uh, thing. I think it's like in a week. So, you know, uh, as soon as these games are streamed and, and you know, the, the gameplay is out there, I will do my pre-impressions. And as soon as I get my hands on it, which should be pretty early because I am often invited to um, cover Black Desert Online's new updates, then yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm give my reviews. I'm gonna show you guys, I'll play the game and, and stuff like that. So, want more content like this guys, you know, I don't know, keep the hype alive. 
So much love. My name's Skylint, and I'll see you in the next one.